Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we'll start the second bit for uh, treatment of PPH, but now for the size less than 80 grams. Transurethral uh, resection of the prostate was used for surgical treatment of bladder outlet obstruction secondary to benign prostatic hyperplasia since 1940s. And after 70 years, TORP is the most frequently performed surgical intervention after cataract in males worldwide. So after 70 years, it is the most common intervention for males except for cataract. When talking in this debate, I will focus on the surgeon perspectives, not like Dr. Kandari on patient perspectives. For surgeons, you have to be efficient. In a recent meta-analysis of 20 randomized controlled trials, for follow-up of five years, TORP has resulted in significant reduction in IPSS symptom score, quality of life scores, mean QMAX improvement, and mean BVR improvement. So this is both subjective and objective efficacy. And this efficacy is for long time. TORB delivered a durable outcome, as shown by studies with follow-up of 8 to 22 years. And one of these studies, with mean follow-up of 13 years, reported significant and sustained improvement in neurodynamic parameters. The re-treatment after TORP, a review analysis of 29 randomized controlled trials found a retreatment rate of 2.6%. In a large scale of 20,000 men, the overall retreatment was 2.9 at one year, 5.8 at five years. So it is effective subjective effectiveness, objective effectiveness for a long time, low retreatment rate with multiple randomized controlled trials and a huge number of patients. When coming to safety, the main drawback of TORP in the early reports were high rate of complications, but this is overcome by modification and refinement of the techniques that resulted in the decreasing the perioperative mortality to 0.1% and morbidity to 11.1%. These are the, the early complications of TORP, clot retention 5%, acute urine retention 4.5, urinary tract infection 4.1, bleeding requiring transfusion 2.9, and TOR syndrome 0.8%. The long-term complications after TORP including retrograde ejaculation, 65%, erectile dysfunction, 6.5%, bladder neck contraction in 4.7%, urethral stricture, 38 and incontinence in 22 However, there are some studies like this one, transurethral resection of the prostate with preservation of the bladder neck, they proved that it decreases the incidence of retrograde ejaculation. They compared 130 men. The retrograde ejaculation at 12 months decreased from 75 with a standard TRP to 33 with bladder neck preservation. New onset of erectile dysfunction after TRP the risk factors in developing the new onset was not the technique. The risk factors was re in this risk factors were studied in 41,000 patients. And the risk factors were obesity, old age, chronic kidney disease, and the cardiac ischemia. A major breakthrough was developed, it is, is using the bipolar TORP, transurethral resection, in saline, where the conventional hypotonic irrigation was replaced with saline. 
and bipolar TORP is the most widely and thoroughly investigated alternative to monopolar TORP, there is 56 randomized controlled trials. Bipolar TORB is preferable over uh, due to its more favorable perioperative outcomes. It eliminates TOR syndrome. It lowers the clot retention rate and blood transfusion rates. It shorters the irrigation time, catheterization time, and hospitalization. These are alternatives to TORP for prostate less than 80 grams. Transurethral microwave thermotherapy, TUMT, transurethral needle ablation, vaporization, prostatic urethral stent, prostatic urethral lift, aqua ablation, water vapor energy, prostate artery embolization, intraprostatic injection of botulinum toxin A. Most of these alternatives were tried. And here come laser with different techniques, interstitial laser coagulation, visual laser ablation, photoselective vaporization, holmium laser ablation resection or inoculation, and tholium ablation resection or inoculation. I am a surgeon, and most of you are surgeon. We don't like to handle our cases to another subspeciality, except in very limited circumstances. I'm talking about prostatic artery embolization. We don't like to cook the prostate, TUMT, TUNT, TU tuna. We don't like to boil the prostate. We like to remove the prostate. This is surgery. The main concern with alternative treatment to modality is the bubble phenomena. The new technique is developed, followed by randomized controlled trials that showed comparative efficacy and better tolerability than the gold standard which is TRP. And then the device is sold all over the world. This is the bubble. The bubble started small, increase, and then after a few years, no one is using it because they realized its inferior outcomes. And these are the examples of the bubble effect. TUMT, TUNA, interstitial laser coagulation, visual laser ablation, prostatic urethral stent, and the 80 watt BVB. When coming to the evidence-based, TORB is the current standard surgical procedure for men with PBH of 30 to 80 milliliter and bothersome to moderate to, to severe lower urinary tract symptoms. This is level one. Bipolar TORB achieved short and mid and long term results comparable to monopolar, but bipolar TRP has a more favorable perioperative safety profile. This is level one. And these are the most recent guidelines published by the European Association of Urology. Transurethral incision is the surgical treatment of a choice in prostates less than 30 milliliter. This is a strong evidence. And bipolar or monopolar transurethral resection is a surgical treatment with prostate size 30 to 80. This is a strong recommendation. Laser inoculation of the prostate using holmium to men with moderate to severe is an alternative to transurethral resection and open prostatectomy. This is another strong recommendation. One, one minute left, Dr. Ahmed. Okay. Offer prostatic urethral lift to men with lots instead uh, interested in preserving their ejaculatory function with prostate less than 70 milliliter and no median loop. And this is the scheme of the EAU guidelines. You will see for prostates over 80, 30 to 80, TORP is number one. In conclusion, TORP is the gold standard surgical treatment for BBH less than 80 grams because it is effective. The efficacy was proved on large number of patients, multiple randomized studies in academic and community hospitals. The new techniques are used in academic hospitals. 
But in community hospital, where most of the patient, 80% of the patient are treated in community hospital. So TRP is effective from academic and community hospital. And this is the only technique with proved long-term durability. The personal experience of the resectionist is an independent factor in the outcome of this operation. So our first obligation is to train the new generation to be sure that they acquire the experience enough in the correct performance of the individual, in the standardized international accepted treatment, which is TORP. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, Dr. Albir, how will you defend the bubble phenomena that you see? Yeah. Dr. Albir Al Hajj is an, uh, a professor, assistant professor of the minimally invasive surgery uh, at the American University of Beirut Medical Center. Please, 10 minutes. Dr. Nahas, you made the job very hard for me, or actually not, because TURP is the gold standard, and we all agree on that. There's no, there's no debate about it. You know, TURP at the box tissue. Now, I asked you a question. Why are we needing bipolar TURP if TURP was that perfect? So also, it's a technique that needed perfection. And why are we using lasers? So today, we have all lasers that are available. And as you said, enucleation is one of the standards. And also, we need to have an option for patients who are on anticoagulants. And TRP is not enough. We had a talk about robotic simple prostatectomy. I'm gonna, so first question we ask, so why do we need those new techniques? Well, because we have an aging population. They are more at high risk. Multiple comorbidities and risk of complications. Some patients would not tolerate anesthesia, general anesthesia, so we need an alternative. But also, we are under stress to do cost reduction. So we need outpatient procedures under local anesthesia, and that is very important nowadays. The patients are demanding preservation of ejaculation. How many of your patients will stop the alpha blocker because they have an ejaculatory dysfunction? And many patients now, when they see that they have an option to preserve the ejaculation, they will choose that option. And you showed 65% ejaculatory dysfunction in TURP. The data is very variable anyway. They want something less invasive. They want to go back home earlier, go back to work earlier. And of course, the bubble effect, you are right, absolutely. There's a large market. The industry is interested. I think we should take this, take this positively. And I think, so if you know, people who are experts in this are leading those uh, RCTs, and doing it scientifically, and Dr. Humphreys is one of them. So this is where it is important, and we're getting in the right direction. So the things that do not work will be, you know, not used anymore. So how will these techniques work? They have different mechanisms of action. Some of them will remove tissue like the TURP. Others will change the shape of the prostate, and will, uh, others will cause ischemia, ablate tissue during that effect. So I will talk only about uh, these techniques, I'll talk about the Eurolift, the Resume, the Aquablation, and two new modalities that might be promising or not, Histotripsy and PRX302. So the Eurolift, Dr. Humphreys spoke about it earlier. So it's the advantage here is that you are doing patients under local anesthetic. So doing it in clinic, no need for anesthesia. So this is one option. Prostates less than 70 gram. These are in our practice, in the regular practice, most of the patients we see. And uh, of course, there are exclusion criteria. The median lobe is one of them. We know that. And we should be aware. We should not push the indication and push the envelope. We should know exactly and tell the patient, your lift is good for you or it's not good for you. It's very easy. If it's not good, then there are other alternatives. Maybe TRP is one of them but we should be aware of those and explain them to the patient. The trials are there, so RCT is well-designed, good results, and good long-term results. Here, after five years, a retreatment of 
but still those patients didn't have a general anesthesia. I'm going to skip those and talk a little bit about the resume as well. So the resume, also Dr. Humphreys talked about it, the mechanism and everything. So uh, this burst delivery, the steam that's delivered into the prostate uh, in a nine second uh, time, and this will cause uh, tissue, uh, tissue necrosis, tissue destru destruction. And um, they've shown in their studies that the reduction of the prostate size is around 30% on MRI studies. And they have long-term outcomes, so the long-term outcomes are out now, and we have uh, improved outcomes uh, on, uh, I think for, uh, it's uh, five years, outcomes now with a retreatment rate of 4.4%. Of course, the downfall, the patient should know they should keep their catheter for five days. But it's a five-minute procedure, it's a fast procedure, it's under local anesthesia. So what's the harm? There is also aquablation. I presented the talk about it earlier. So I believe this is a good alternative because this is the only one that removes tissue. It causes a good cavity and it preserves the ejaculatory function. Not in all patients, but you can be conservative and do that preservation. It really depends on your planning and the experience. Also, there are many studies. The water one talks about our prostates we're talking about here, less than 80. The water two talks about the biggest pro bigger prostates. There is also an ongoing trial now, which we are participating in, which is the open water, which is a phase four. Um, and the data is there. This is a randomized controlled trial. This is comparable to TURP. And even in the 50 to 80 gram prostate, it did better than TURP. I think it's very important here, the impo having a robot doing that procedure or that part of ablation makes it standard. It standardizes the procedure. And it preserves the ejaculatory function, as I told you before. 10% lost their ejaculation versus 36% for TURP. There are also new mortalities. We don't know if these were, will be effective, but I think it's good to have new technology. So this is one of them. This is uh, histotripsy. It delivers a transperineal acoustic energy that was called, will cause cavitation in the prostate. They did a phase two. It was not that good. And I think they're doing some evolution on the machine. I think there's also interest in the injectables. So injecting products into the prostate. Ethanol was tried before. It was very toxic. Uh, there was another product as well that was re also not successful. PRX32 is being tried now. Uh, they had a phase two trial. Uh, it was safe, so they inject this product into the prostate transperineally, and it will cause uh, tissue necrosis as well. And they had this recent randomized trial with 92 patients. They had improvement in IPSS, mild improvement, and uh, the quality of life and PVR did not improve significantly. So the, and the prostate volume. So I will conclude to tell you, yes, TURP is the gold standard. It is still the most readily available technology and the most learned technology by our residents, by the urologists all around the world. So this is a technology that they know. But there are many novel technologies in BPH. Some of them will be, you know, out on an out basis that you will use in the clinic. So you avoid your patients going into anesthesia. Others will be comparable to TURP with less side effects. And I think we should have many options because our, each patient is different today. We cannot say we all do all patients with TURP or we do all patients with, I don't know, robotic simple prostatectomy. Every patient needs his procedure that is tailored to him according to what he needs. And I think we should embrace these new technologies because this is the way to the future. I mean, you said URP started in 1940. I can't imagine 1940. I mean, can you imagine using that phone anymore? I mean, I will not. I would prefer this, you know, new foldable screen phone. And, you know, I'm very happy with that. Thank you.